All right, to be honest with you, I thought we were finished with this assignment um, because the back, if you will, was a completely different Microsoft Word document. So it turns out there's a back. So here comes the video for that. Also, because of the way they set it up, um, if you're in somebody else's class other than Mr. Burton's class, you're likely to have this restarted over at problem number one for you. So for some of you, this is problem number one again, and problem number two again, and so on. But um, I feel silly having two different problem number ones on the same assignment. So problem number four is what I'm calling it. So let's get started. Problem number four is back in standard form. We seem to have a term missing here. Uh, normally we're talking about AX squared plus BX plus C. So you'll notice the C term is missing, so it's really like this plus zero. So this eight is the B term. You can tell because it's next to the X. So that's important because for standard form, we start by finding the axis of symmetry, which is given by this formula. X is equal to the opposite of B divided by 2A. So this will give us the axis of symmetry. So here we will have um, the opposite of B. If B is 8, then I've got negative 8. And that's divided by 2A. Well, A is negative 2. OK, so that's going to give us negative 8 over negative 4. Uh, so that's going to give us positive 2. OK, so x equals 2. That's the axis of symmetry. Um, they probably ask us for that down here, so we might as well go ahead and write it down. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line at, in this case, is vertical line at 2, so x equals 2. Now, that axis of symmetry also gives us the x-coordinate of the vertex. So um, I like to put my vertex right here in the middle. So my x-coordinate I now know is 2. So if the x-coordinate is 2, then going less than 2, then that's 1 and 0. Greater than 2, that's going to be 3 and 4. So let's go ahead and pull the rest of these points off of our TI-30XS multi-view. My wife is laughing at me, you guys. Um, let's see. So if I hit the table button, I'll just slide this over real quick. Okay, so the equation is negative 2x squared plus 8x. So negative 2x squared plus 8x. Um, you wind up hitting enter about five times. So here we go. Now this table, we need it to start off at an x value of 0. And there it is. So I have 0, 6, 8 for my y value. So 0, 6, 8. Now because of symmetry, I expect these values to repeat. So if this is 6, this should be 6. If this is 0, this should be 0. Uh, now let's check and see if that actually happens. So is this a 6? Bam! The next one should be a zero. I'm a psychic, okay? Or a genius, you know, take your pick. Either one is kind of awesome. So zero, zero is gonna be right here. One comma six is gonna be right here. Two comma eight is there. And then here's where the symmetry kicked in. And I had three six okay see the mirror images there and four zero I'm betting I can fit one more value on this graph beyond these five so let's go down one more value five negative ten just barely fits but it does fit so let's put that extra value on the chart five 
negative 10 would be right here. And the mirror image would be right here. Please, 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 always do what I just did. If you can fit another value on your graph, they're free right here on the calculator. Just grab one more. It doesn't cost you anything. And it makes your graph that much more accurate. So let's go ahead and, and uh, graph this parabola. By the way, we should have known that this parabola was going to be upside down like this, facing down, just by looking at the equation. What part of the equation tells us that the parabola is going to be downward facing like this? Yeah, that's right, this negative in the front. Okay, the A value is negative. Anytime that happens, it's going to be a downward facing parabola. So there's the parabola. And uh, let's go ahead and get the axis of symmetry going right down the middle here. All right, so there is your axis of symmetry. Let's answer these questions they have for us. So we need the vertex, which was 2 comma 8 that we found. All right, because that vertex is at the very top of this graph, it's the highest point that makes it the maximum. Uh, the parabola is clearly facing downward and the zeros are the x-intercepts so uh, we've got one here at 0 comma 0 and we've got one here at what's that 4 comma 0 Now the y-intercept is where the graph touches the y-axis. Well, this x-intercept is also happening to be the y-intercept. All right, it the this parabola touches the x-axis and the y-axis at zero comma zero. The domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity because the domain is the x-values, and this graph goes left forever and right forever. The range is the y values, and this graph goes from negative infinity here at the bottom um, all the way up to 8 at the top. So negative infinity to 8. All right, infinities always get the round parentheses, and uh, this 8 is going to get the square bracket to show that 8 is included. The parabola touches 8, it reaches 8. Uh, by the way, you have to give me this range in this order. It's got to be from bottom to top. Uh, both domain and range are always given from least to greatest. So the order matters. So it's got to be negative infinity to 8, not the other way around. Okay, I think that's all we needed for problem number 4. So let's move on to problem number 5. Or if you're not in my class, they might have called it number 2 on the back. This is vertex form. Vertex form. The beauty of vertex form is you can look at it and immediately know what the vertex is. The vertex is going to come from these two values right here, the 5 and the negative 1. Uh, but it, the vertex will be the opposite of this one, and then this one stays the same. So the vertex is going to be negative 5, comma, negative 1. Again, it's the opposite of this one, and then keep this one the same. So um, let's always put the vertex in the middle of our chart. So the vertex will be right here, negative 5, negative 1. Let's graph it as well. Negative 5, negative 1. Now, is this parabola going to be upward facing or downward facing? We should know just by the equation. See how there's no negative sign in front of here? It's positive. That means we know that it's going to be an upward facing parabola like this. So just know that in the back of your head. But let's go ahead and grab the other values. If this uh, negative 5 is in the middle because it's the vertex, um, going less than negative 5 will be negative 6, negative 7. 
greater than negative 5 will be negative 4 and negative 3. Okay, take a look at the calculator. Hit the table button. Okay, the equation. Um, x plus 5 squared minus 1. All right, x plus 5 squared minus 1. All right, hit the Enter key five times. Now, our table needs to start at negative 7, so let's just scroll to negative 7. So at negative 7, we have 3, 0, negative 1. So we have 3, 0, and then negative 1. We already knew it was going to be negative 1 right from the beginning. And because of the symmetry of a parabola, you can bet that if this is 0, then this will be 0. And if this is 3, then this will be 3. Uh, but let's verify that by looking at the calculator. So there's the 0, and there's the 3. All right, let's go ahead and uh, plot these points. So negative 7, 3. So here's negative 7, 3. Okay, negative 6, 0. Be right here. Negative 5, negative 1, we already graphed that. And then the symmetry, negative 4, 0 and negative 3, 3. Um, let's go one value further and see if, uh, if we can fit any more points on the graph. So let's just scroll down one more. Oh, this fits nicely. So negative 2, 8. Let's go ahead and include that on the graph, even though it's not one of the five values that we have on the chart here. So negative 2, 8 and its mirror image. All right, so there's our parabola. Now, how about that uh, axis of symmetry? All right, there's our axis of symmetry right down the middle. Um, so I guess we're ready to answer some questions. So the vertex. The vertex, of course, was the negative 5, negative 1 that we saw right away. This vertex is at the very bottom of the graph. It's the lowest point on the parabola. So it is a minimum. This parabola obviously is reaching for the sky. It's opening up. We knew this because it is positive a value. But sure enough, it is opening up. The axis of symmetry is this vertical line. Vertical lines always have the equation x equals something. Uh, this is a vertical line at negative 5. So that's x equals negative 5. So when I ask you for the axis of symmetry, I'm looking for this tiny equation, x equals negative 5. Do not just put negative 5. It has to be x equals negative 5. Uh, the zeros are these x-intercepts. So at uh, we've got one at negative 6 and one at negative 4. So I'm going to say negative 6 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. The y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. Now, you can't see it on this graph because it must cross the y-axis. You know, like if the y-axis continues up like this and uh, the parabola continues like this, you know, the y-intercept must be way up here somewhere. But it's off the graph, so we can't see it. Um, we know the y-intercept is always 0, comma something. It's not on our little chart. So um, what you do is go to your calculator scroll to 0 and that'll be your y-intercept so 0 comma 24 is your y-intercept okay and you see that 24 no wonder why you couldn't see it 24 indeed is way off the graph anyway the domain that's the x values um, so how far does it go to the left and how far does the graph go to the right well it goes left forever and right forever so that's why for the domain we're going to put negative infinity to positive infinity sometimes you'll see this as all real numbers but we usually use interval notation now the range is the y values 
and you need to give it to me from least to greatest, bottom to top. So the lowest value is here at the, the vertex, and that's at negative 1. Negative 1 to infinity, because it starts at negative 1 and goes up forever. So the range is going to be negative 1 to infinity. Now, infinities always get the round parentheses. This negative 1 is going to get the square bracket to show that negative 1 is included on the parabola. All right, The parabola touches negative 1. You can see the negative 1 right here in the vertex. It's definitely included. OK, um, so that was it for problem number 5 or you might have it listed as problem number two on the back of your paper. All right, this video is over 15 minutes long, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop this video here, and I'll put the remaining two problems on another video.